Hey, it's Chris. A lot of people have written off Apple's Reminders app over the years because maybe they tried it a long time ago and just thought that it was too simple. But it's actually been getting lots of powerful new features over the years, many of which I covered in a video last year called How to Level Up Apple Reminders. But with the latest versions of iOS, iPadOS, and macOS, Apple Reminders is getting several powerful new features that should make anyone who wants to get more done very happy. First though, very quickly, here's a few reasons why you might wanna use Apple's Reminders app over other to-do list apps. First of all, the Reminders app is everywhere. It's not just on your iPhone, your iPad, or your Mac. It's also on the Apple Watch, it's in CarPlay, and it's on your HomePods. It's even in iCloud, in your browser. It's also everywhere in the sense that it has geofenced reminders which can remind you about certain things at certain locations, which several other popular apps, like Things for instance, can't do. Another reason is that Apple's Reminders app adapts to your personal needs. It's so simple that even your grandma's grandma could have figured it out. But it's recently become powerful enough that even power users are starting to take notice. And that's thanks to features like tags, like smart folders, and deep system integration, like the ability to link to a reminder from the Safari share button. And let's also not forget that Apple's Reminders app is free. An actually usable version of a popular app like Todoist costs $48 a year. And Things isn't free either. An app like Minimalist Pro has a subscription and TickTick, another popular app, also has in-app purchases. So if you're looking to up your productivity, those are some great reasons to give Apple's reminders a fresh look, especially with all the great new features. Now, one of the best new features this year with reminders is the ability to pin your favorite lists. So if you're the kind of person that has a ton of lists, like here I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different lists, which doesn't matter too much on the iPad because there's so much screen space, but on the iPhone where space is more limited, this can really matter. This is really great. So if you have a list that's down at the bottom that you wanna make more prominent, you can pin it and it's gonna go live up in the top left corner of your screen. Or if you're on the iPhone, it'll show up in those top boxes towards the top of the screen. This is such a great way to personalize this app and really make it your own. So now that I've pinned something up here, I can just long press on it and say unpin. But in order to pin it, you just swipe and hit pin. This is very similar to what you can do in Apple Notes, for instance, where you can come in and just have a bunch of pinned notes up at the top of your notes list. On the iPad here, if I come up to the three dots above the search bar and tap on templates, you can see that I've got a template set up. What is this template? These new templates are so great because they open up a whole new realm of possibilities here. Let's say that you have some kind of repetitive task or project that you tackle on either a daily, weekly, or monthly basis, just for example. And instead of going in and creating a new list with the same steps for every single time, you can just use one of your templates by saving a list that you've already put together as a template. So this template here is my video production template. And if I tap on it, I can give it a new name like iPhone review and hit create. And it's gonna create a new list down here at the bottom called iPhone review. It's auto-populated this with some steps here like create an outline for the video, write a script, import, shoot, edit, publish that video. But on top of that, I've also made sure that it includes some tags. So this is tagged with main channel as a hashtag. And also from my template, it inherited a time aspect. So it knows that I want these things to be done by the end of the day today. And now we can already start stacking our knowledge from this video because if that's the project I'm working on today, maybe I wanna go ahead and pin it up to the top here for easy access. You see how that works? But you know what else is cool about templates? You can actually create and share these templates so other people can use them, whether you're part of a team and this is at work or just with your family members. So if you hit those three dots above the search and you go to templates and you hit the little I on the template there for information, there's a place to edit that template or share that template. Now, one thing that's nice about the Reminders app here is that you've always been able to add some notes. So if I tap on one of these, there's a place here where I can say, don't forget to drink some nitro coffee first. That's just a plain old, simple, boring old note, right? But with this update, you're now able to have some rich formatting within your note, which just spices things up a little bit. It makes it a little bit easier to format text within this, especially if you're the kind of person who doesn't want to have to go over to your notes app to have your notes live there for something that could just be a simple note over in reminders. So if I tap into the notes section here, at the bottom of the screen, you'll see up here just some simple formatting options, bold, italic, underline. So I can come in here and you know, I'm just for demonstration purposes, putting in some headers. So I can highlight that and I can just use the keyboard shortcut to bold that now. You know what else is pretty cool here? At WWDC, one of the big announcements was that Apple's gonna let you customize the toolbar at the top of some of your apps. Well, 
this is one of those apps that you can customize. So the toolbar is right up here at the top of the screen. You got like a calendar icon, a location icon, a flag for your priorities, and then a hashtag so you can tag some stuff. Well, if I go to the top right and click on those three dots, you can see there's an option to customize the toolbar. And if I click on that, there's really only one thing that I can do here, and that is put in the add image button. A text-based reminder is great, but sometimes you wanna be able to drop in an image, either just because you want that visual reference to something, or you can get a little bit more clever with that. Maybe you already made a post-it note somewhere that's reminding you of something. Well, you can take a picture of that post-it note and use this little button here to scan a document, choose a photo, or take a photo that attaches to one of your reminders. The other really powerful thing that I wanna point out about adding this button is that if I tap into a reminder and I tap on that new camera button that we added, I can also select scan text. And what that lets me do is import some text that maybe I don't feel like typing out if it's a big long paragraph or something. That's great for your notes section. Now, speaking of reminders, let me remind you to check out the Daily Tech wallpaper packs. We have tons of super unique wallpaper packs you're not gonna find anywhere else. They're a visual system, which you're also not gonna find anywhere else, including our all-time most downloaded pack, the Punktopia pack, which you're not gonna find anywhere else. This video also is obviously very productivity related, so I have to let you know I am working on a productivity course that will help you work better, faster, smarter, with less burnout within the Apple ecosystem. So if that's something you're interested in, there's a link down in the description where you can give me your email and I won't spam you, I'll just let you know when that's live, sometime in the next two or three months. Last thing before we move on, you should consider getting a paper-like screen projector if you do anything with your Apple Pencil because you can come in here and scribble your notes and your titles in your Reminders app with the Apple Pencil on the iPad here, and it's such a great experience. It really does feel like you're writing on a piece of paper instead of a slippery screen. Now, one of the other new features that's been added to Reminders this year is some filtering options that weren't there before. So now if you have like a thousand reminders and you really need to narrow down what is in front of your face, there are now some new ways to filter for any criteria in your custom smart list or within the tag browser itself here. So in the bottom left corner of my screen, I've got some sample tags. I've got books, clips, main channel, and productivity course. Well, main channel and clips are pretty related for me. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on main channel here. That shows me all the things tag main channel. But you know what I wanna do is just see the ones that are main channel and clips. Now I've filtered for just main channel and clips, but you know what? I actually don't want anything with clips to show up. So I'm gonna tap it again, and now it's gonna show me everything that's labeled main channel, but it's gonna filter out clips. See how that works? The other thing that you can do is as you're looking at your list, go to the top right, click on those three dots, and say sort by. Right now it's creation date, but I'm gonna do a manual sort, a due date, priority, title, and of course oldest or newest first. If I do manual, this actually lets me just rearrange things however I want them. Now, being able to share a list is definitely a life upgrade. You know, I can share a list with my wife and we can both add stuff to it. But instead of just sharing lists now, you can actually get notifications for shared lists in this new update. So now when a task gets added to a shared list, you get a notification if you so choose, or when something gets completed off of a list, you also can get a notification if you so choose. Now, obviously, lots of productivity apps out there have allowed for these sorts of notifications for a long time, but a lot of them are super business focused and also cost a lot of money. Again, this is free, and we're walking the line here with this sort of a feature between really simple and where this app is starting to do quite a few powerful things. And I think uh, we're not quite to the point yet where it's overwhelming. This is kind of a hidden feature that just sort of works, you know, and if you don't like it, you could turn it off. It's really nice though. But one thing that's not really anything you need to do, it's just how the app works now, is the way that it's displaying lists for you. So if I click on the today view here, it'll show me morning, afternoon, and by tonight. If I do scheduled, it's gonna break things down by today, tomorrow, the rest of the month. If I look at my all list, it's gonna break that out in all the different lists that I have set up over on the side. So reminders, courses, personal, around the house, things to buy. And this is very similar to what we're seeing Apple do in Apple Notes now. When you go in and look at your list of notes, you're seeing things that you did today, things that happened you know, yesterday, and then everything else. It's just a much nicer way of presenting this information to you, kind of with this date hierarchy, just so you can just keep things straight a little bit better. Something else that's just worth pointing out is that there's now a better way to view all your completed tasks. It's just this button up here in the top left called completed, but it also breaks things down by today, by the rest of the month, May, 
all of this stuff. And the reason that this is an upgrade is because sometimes you did something and you need to know what it was that you did, or maybe you need to access a note from within that reminder. And look, I've got 4,855 completed reminders on here. That's a lot of stuff to go through. So a better way of parsing that is definitely welcome. One extra feature that I'm gonna tell you about has to do with FaceTime actually. Now I'm not gonna open up FaceTime because I don't have anyone to FaceTime with right now in the middle of this video. But Apple's been busy announcing all kinds of new collaboration features, especially in relation to FaceTime. And of course, they've got a brand new app coming out called Freeform, which is gonna be all about collaboration with different people, which I can't wait to get my hands on. So subscribe if you're not already, if you wanna see me go hands on with that. But let's say you wanna plan something with somebody or with other people. Maybe it's a project at work, maybe it's just a trip, a family vacation, all right? You can go into FaceTime, tap the share button during an active FaceTime call and start collaborating with other people. So lots of people can be adding stuff and don't forget you've got your new templates that are also shareable here. So you can like share your packing list with somebody, for instance. Really, the possibilities are unlimited. You really don't need other more expensive apps like you maybe thought you did for a lot of the things that you do in your life, both personal and professional. So there you go. That was actually like eight or nine or more different tips that you can use with reminders there, all the new features that you can put to use and start learning. I know there's a lot of new things, right? Every time a new version of iOS or iPadOS or macOS comes out, and you just get buried trying to figure out what everything does. That's why I make these videos, to point out the little minutia that's actually not so small. It can make a big impact on your life if you know about it and actually start using it. So my advice to you is go into Reminders. You know, If you have some stuff in another app like Things or Todoist, try importing that stuff over here and play around with it. See if you like this and maybe save yourself some money. Do me a favor, leave me a timestamp with your favorite part of this video down in the description and so you can let other people know what was good, where the value was in this video. Uh, and I'm also just curious what you like the best out of all these new features. If you're already using this stuff, drop some tips of your own down for the community to check out down below. Don't forget you can check out the wallpapers from the Daily Tech Wallpapers Pack. This is from the Dark Matter Pack, one of my favorites. Also, get yourself signed up for that course. That link is down in the description. It's not really signing up for the course, it's just signing up for notifications when the course goes live. I'm so excited about it. I really think it's gonna be a life-changing course, and I know what I'm saying, I don't say that lightly. Otherwise, thanks for hanging out. There is a podcast too, you can check out, it comes out Fridays. We have a newsletter also, that'll put your app and accessory discovery on autopilot, that comes out every Friday. And these cool things just drop in your inbox, and you had to do no work to find out about them. It's pretty nice. Uh, that's it for this video. I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks for hanging out. Later.